diddly dongly do it's Sishing Lu, and I am here in beautiful, 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 beautiful Batong Beach, Phuket. All right, so I'm sitting here on the beach. I'm going to head back to my room. I'll tell you about Bangkok, and then I'll go out and walk again, tell you about my experiences in Phuket. But before you do that, make sure you leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you back in my room. All right, welcome to my hotel room. As you know, the Thailand trip was gonna be two weeks long. First week I spent in Bangkok, now I'm in Phuket, and this is gonna be the second week. My original plan was to have this week be about Bangkok, and the next week be about Phuket. Do a day by day like the Chinese New Year video. On the first day I did this, on the second day I did this, but once I was in Bangkok, I realized that day by day was going to be difficult because it's not a big cultural experience for me. It's just my hometown. I spent the first 13 years of my life there, so I don't really have any new exciting observations. Daily life is not interesting, it's just, okay, I'm doing the normal things that I did for 13 years. I even thought of using my girlfriend to do an interview kind of thing, but she kind of told me she'd sooner start her own channel. So I guess I'm on my own and I have to figure out a way around it, right? I'm gonna tell you about Bangkok. So we got to Bangkok on an overnight flight. It was a red eye and we took a taxi to my family's house. It's where my grandfather lives and where my aunt lives and where my aunt's three lovely little dogs live. And while I was there, I did the usual stuff when I visit Thailand. I had a tourist with me, so we did a couple of special things too. We went to the temple of the Emerald Buddha. It's crazy crowded now. Last time I was there, there was no one there. I would have days where I would be the only person in that temple, but now I'm sure that there were easily 10,000 people just looking at all of the sites, taking in tourists, stuff wasting money it got super popular the temples inside the Grand Palace in Bangkok which is located in the old city amazing architecture fusion of traditional Thai and the colonial era of Europe and we also went to the temple of the reclining Buddha we said prayers and everything prayed for my grandmother who passed away last year love you Kunyai miss you on another day we also went to Jim Thompson's house which was pretty cool I mean this was some uh, I guess some uh, American architect who joined the army and then who moved to Thailand permanently and then he disappeared in Malaysia. There's this whole conspiracy theory about how he was secretly working for intelligence the entire time and he got lost on a mission, but who knows? No one knows anything about what happened to him. He disappeared without a trace. And the architecture is really awesome too. This guy was so connected. He sourced all of this traditional architecture imported from Europe and all these different places around the world. He was just some American who was living in Thailand, but he had the connections to get Belgian chandeliers and crazy Venetian marble and all of this stuff from all of these old palaces from all over Thailand. And he built this traditional Thai house. East meets West, it's super cool. He ended up revitalizing the Thai silk industry. Quite a figure bit of a pseudo legend. On another day we went to Thailand's Chinatown. I think it was the, actually the first time that I, I remember going there. In Chinese, the word for Chinatown is Tang Ren Jie. Jie means street. But usually Chinatown is more than just one street. Well in Bangkok it was just one big street. And there were all of these street side stalls that come out at night. Too crowded. I could barely get any footage. I was so stressed out. I had to mind where I was walking so I couldn't get any good footage of Chinatown. Um, besides those three things, we didn't really do any other touristy things because our house was on the outskirts so it was a bit of a commitment to get into town because we didn't own a car taking a taxi in every day it takes like an hour in an hour out but you know it was different you know if we were a, if we were a regular tourist we, we would have probably just stayed in the city in some hotel but you know we had a family had a house made sense it ended up kind of limiting us a little bit but that's okay we also went to a couple of night markets near where we live the atmosphere is fantastic it's always my favorite thing to do when I visit Thailand just rows and rows and rows of small shops with all of these different snacks and all of these interesting drinks. We had some really, really good mocktails named after mental disorders. Good way to get people to buy it. You know, I have paranoia. I'm gonna get a paranoia mocktail. Uh, malls. We, we went to a bunch of malls. Paragon, the biggest mall in Thailand, I think. Definitely really huge. Six or seven floors of just upscale, crazy designer brands and just a good place to go spend money. There were also some really good restaurants in the basement of Paragon too. It's a great mall. If you just wanna walk around and take in the atmosphere of feeling wealthy, that's where you go. We also went to a couple of other malls on the last day. Near our house, there's this big street. Three malls, boom, 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 in a row. First mall is called Central Festival. One of the coolest malls I've ever been to. Half of that mall is outside. It's like a courtyard. Restaurants, upstairs, downstairs. It's all open to the air. And there's a bunch of kids' playgrounds. There's even a track upstairs to go running on if that's what you wanna do. It's just a really cool atmosphere. I really like 
Central Festival. Definitely one of my favorite malls in Bangkok. It's not really accessible if you don't live in that general area because it's totally off the public transportation lines. Luckily, we lived around that area, so we could just take a taxi out there. It was pretty quick. We also walked to another mall, the Crystal, a bit older. They expanded it a lot. Last time I was there, there was no movie theater. Now there's a movie theater. And then we walked from the Crystal to another mall called The Walk. So just these three malls, boom, boom, boom. And we just went home. Um, that's really it. I mean, I also spent some time with my childhood friend Jeep. It's been a really long time since I had seen him, so I'm really happy to get in touch with him. But Bangkok, that's it. Um, it's, it's tough to talk about your own hometown from a cultural standpoint. I definitely couldn't do the whole Chinese New Year thing from last week's video because it's just so normal for me. You know, this is what I'm used to, but it's definitely gotten more upscale, more touristy, and a lot more convenient since I lived there. Because Bangkok was just the capital of Thailand when I was a kid. Now, it's just somewhere tourists go. It's my home, it's messy, it's just chaotic, it's crazy. It's not the most convenient place. I mean, that's speaking from my perspective. I was on the outskirts of Bangkok. If you go be a tourist in Bangkok and you stay in the central area of the city, I'm sure it will be much easier for you. I would recommend Bangkok. It's not a place where you can just kind of relax. It's a place where you kind of have to really go searching for things to do. Once you exhaust all of the tourist areas, you'll think, oh, there's just malls, it's just shopping. There's nothing to do here. But there are a lot of things to do. You just have to go searching for them. And uh, it's a bit tricky, but you just need to be persistent. Bangkok is an awesome city. Go visit Bangkok. Let's talk Phuket. Phuket's where I am now. It's in the south of Thailand, and it's a whole different kind of crazy. I'm in Batong Beach, and let's go for a walk. Here I am in the night market in Patong. It's the big tourist area in Phuket. Stuff here is expensive, but it's not out of reach. It's just priced high enough that uh, you think it's expensive, but it's not so high that you don't want to buy it. But you know what? I just bought some noodles and a drink, 100 baht and 80 baht respectively. It's not pricey in the grand scheme of things, but if you walk about 500 meters north, like we did earlier today, you can get this stuff at literally less than half the price. But you know, we're here for the experience. Wouldn't trade it. There are lots of crazy clubs, crazy bars around here. It's just, a little, it's a little unsavory, but it's a nice street and it's exciting. It's a good nightlife. If you are of age, I recommend you come check this place out, but it's really interesting to see people taking their kids here and walking them around. It's not really child appropriate, but I'll bring you back once we get to the beach, all right? So, here we are on Bataong Beach. This is only our second day in Phuket, so there is, whoo, my hair. There isn't much that we've done yet. Bataong, it's the most popular beach in Phuket. You can kind of see the sea of people here. And there are other beaches that are less popular than this one, but we wanted to be tourists. We wanted to come here, watch the sunset with everyone else, and you can kind of see everyone hanging out, doing some motorsports, having a good time. We can see some people uh, paragliding in the background there. I'm gonna show you guys some scenes of this whole beach thing, and then at night, I'm gonna bring you back to that crazy street that I talked about earlier, just so you guys can get a glimpse of what that's like, all right? See you guys later.
are in the world's craziest street. I'm gonna kind of let this place speak for itself. Kids, cover your eyes. If you don't wanna... Well, let's just say that those pieces of paper that those guys are carrying are not YouTube or family or even my eyes friendly. But it's really exciting, this whole area. Ooh. Kids, don't look. But uh, this place is pretty cool. Lots of bars. This place really, really, really comes alive at night, doesn't it? It's insane. And it's noisy, too. <laughs> wow. I'm gonna blow through this area real quick. again. It's relentless. They won't stop putting these things in my face. Another one. Seriously. <laughs> I'm trying to let this place speak for itself, but I can't even show you half the footage because people keep on throwing these not safe for work posters in my face. No, I don't want to see a show. <laughs> walking street in the world please do not show me okay sorry I thought this footage would be more usable but you know the fact that it's so visibly not usable should give you an idea of the kind of place this is but you know what if you are of age it is a fun time I mean it's not for me most of the stuff but still oh, they always have a good cover band over here your hair was perfectly without her trying So beautiful And I tell her every day Fun, uh, arcade thing too. That's a crazy VR chair where you get strapped in and go upside down. Do not show me that picture, please. Thank you. All right. Um. Yeah. I think you guys have seen enough. Thank you so much. Good morning, guys. This is a good Welcome bar over here. Yes, welcome. I want to go here before I, I leave. It's going to be fun. But anyway, guys, I will bring you back at the hotel. All right. Thanks for joining me on Bangla Walking Street, the most insane walking street in the world. Okay. Oh, before we go, check this place out. Tiger nightclub. Look at the decor. Anyway, I'll see you guys back at the hotel, all right? And that's Phuket. So far, at least, I've got three or four more days in this place, and I don't know where I'm gonna go. If I do go anywhere interesting, I will take a video, and it might be a little bit of a bonus episode. You can expect another video from me next week back in China, and hopefully I'll get to share a part of my life there with you guys. So, diddly doggly do. This was Ishing Lu, and if you liked it, leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.